Hello, hello. Can everyone hear me? That sounds like David. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our little shindig tonight. Uh, Doug, thank you for coming out here. Um, we were looking forward to speaking with you tonight uh, about you know any anything really your suggestions, what you want to see about the movement in the future, in the upcoming you know month, year, ten years, whatever. And um, so today we have the tri-state area coming out. We have uh, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York, and we're hoping to um, you know get the chance to talk with you and see what's up, and you'll get a chance to. Uh, hear about us and what we've done so far on our end as the uh, regional state chapters. So, um, I guess, Doug, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, sure. First, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to, to join in on your little tri-state conference call or whatnot. I hope well, we end up having 50 people, you know, logged into this thing. That'd be really awesome. Um, and for anybody who doesn't know me, uh, my name is Douglas Millette. I am a systems engineer with the Space Shuttle program here in Houston, Texas. Um, I am the guy who made the video Awakening, Our Technical Reality. I gave a lecture to the Houston Humanist Group, which is also on my YouTube channel. Um, in fact, in a second here, I will post the link to my YouTube channel for anyone who doesn't know uh, at where it is or how to get to it. I have a lot of videos up there that I've uploaded. Um, Awakening is 30 minutes long. Our technical reality is 55 or so minutes long that basically showcases all of the technology that really does exist today to prove the point that we have the capability to provide abundance, but we are self-restricting our capability of using the technology to provide abundance. Um, awakening is an historical breakdown of Basically, when the tide started to turn from manual labor to industrial labor to technological labor um, and goes up to the point of breaking down output by calorie. Some, a lot of people really like that <laughs> uh, as to how much we can do now versus how much we could do in the past and the disparity between the two systems of monetary economics versus resource-based economics. Um, and I have short videos on there and things like that. But in a nutshell, uh, I seem to be growing. This wasn't on purpose, but it just kind of happened. I seem to be growing as a somewhat popular voice for the movement. Um, Jacques and Roxanne uh, wanted me, and now it's happening, that I am going to Switzerland from August 3rd to the 10th um, as a representative of the Venus Project at the – uh, at an international convention that they're having there on sustainability and technology. Um, and so I'm, I'm going there because they're on their world tour. The conference wanted them. Instead of them going, they wanted me to go. So because I'm probably the most senior technical background person uh, that knows how to speak to the public. And so with that, that's basically what I'm doing uh, for the movement and a lot more. And we can go into the questions and answers, but that's uh, – that's me in a nutshell. Great. Thank you so much for the introduction, uh, Doug. And um, generally, uh, I think everybody has is, has been following a lot of your stuff and is really um, really hyped up and excited to be able to speak to you. Um, and for those of you who haven't met or haven't looked through Doug's stuff, they're really uh, inspirational and provide a lot of information and insight into how the future could be uh, with our help. So if does anybody want to I know Doug you mentioned you have a couple points that you might wanted to bring up. Um so we can do that or if anybody has any questions we can do that. Sure. Um I was thinking well, one of the things you had asked me was, you know, what what can we do as chapters and, and things of that nature and and all the chapters and and I guess it depends on who you have at your disposal, what the talents are, what you're capable of. I mean, not not every uh, group is going to have engineers and stuff. It really depends on your social makeup and your and your you know subject matter expertise. You know, everybody brings something different to the table. But I think something that we should start doing, and and I'm we're working on this in the Houston chapter. We, I really brought this to the attention of our Houston chapter group 
uh, at our at the last meeting I went to last week was um, in in England they have that taxi, and I can think of no better way to passively advertise the Venus Project than to do an art car of a similar scope, and if at all possible. Work with schools, you know, your universities and colleges or whatever to retrofit or turn that car into an electric car and then just hand it from member to member, quite literally pass the car around and have it park, make sure that it's always parked in conspicuous, obvious places and basically just cycle it around the city. Um, Now, yeah, that's going to take some time. I'm not saying that, that that's something that should be done, you know tomorrow but to pool the resources to actually you know as much as we love to say we want to live in a world without money and that's great we need money to you know to make these things happen you need to use money to kill money that's what i say all the time and so we need to pool resources and get donations and and funds from people to get a car fix the car paint the car convert the car whatever the case may be uh, in order to to start doing things like that. Now that's kind of a high cost, you know, option. Uh, not a lot of chapters might even be able to pull that one off, but it's something people should consider. Or if nothing else, find ways to get those large magnetic stickers that can stick on cars. Uh, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, pizza delivery vehicles have them now and things like that, where you could stick Venus Project logo on it and just stick it on everybody's car. And that'd probably be a lot less cost. It won't be as cool and neat as an art car, you know, a full blown vehicle painted up all fancy with, you know, Venus project graphics and things like that. I mean, that's really an eye catcher, but even just stickers on your car, not so much bumper stickers. Cause I think those can be kind of tacky. I, I'm not a big bumper sticker guy myself, but you know, magnets or things like that to just passively advertise, you know, what it's all about. If nothing else, you'll get somebody to go, huh? Make sure it advertises your local website, your chapter website, because you are trying to connect with your people. If you put the main website on there, these people are going to go to the main Venus Project website, but they're not going to know how to find you specifically. And so you're going to, you might lose them in translation. They might not be able to find you. You won't even know that they were interested in the first place. And, you know, you don't know if you're making any progress, but if you advertise your website ways for them that way they can contact you directly and whatnot especially if on your web page you put up something that says you know if you saw us on a car or something like that email us and let us know is it working things like that if you have questions that way you can get a gauge on its effectivity and one other thing that heather odom and i uh, were talking about something that she had mentioned to me was getting a large stencil with maybe the Venus Project website. This one can be just the main website, per se. And in a high-pressure washer. And go to a dirty building, stick up the stencil with a couple of friends, and high-pressure wash the Venus Project website. And then pull it off. So you've got this dirty building, and you've got this clean venusproject.com. And you do it on sidewalks, and you do it on buildings, or whatever. Now, you're not spray painting. You're not vandalizing. You're not defacing anything it can just get sprayed right off you know or washed off by whatever but you could take this one large stencil maybe you know eight feet by four or five feet tall you don't have to make it it'll and it'll have to be made pretty robustly but then just pressure wash our logo all over the place and uh, those are two that's a very cheap thing to do and the other things are maybe a little more pricey but still passively advertise in your local area and so those are the two things that I had on mind that I wanted to mention to you guys. And um, and then if you have any questions for me, uh, go ahead and start throwing them at me. Cool. Uh, thank you so much. Those are some good ideas. Uh, definitely guerrilla marketing and, uh, is really a good idea. I just hope we don't put up any uh, LED signs like that, like that uh, TV show. I believe it's called, uh, you know, it's it's the one with all the fast food characters and those guys actually went to jail. It's a good thing ours doesn't actually cause any bomb threats or anything. So, 
Good job. Uh, great, great ideas. Um, actually, could Aqua we have a round of? Us. 